<laughs> I mean, I, I think it's just like they they don't want the vegetarian agenda on there because you know they have chicken wings to sell. That I wouldn't doubt that they I probably guess. do have a lot of sponsorships from from food manufacturer that's devoted to I would say meat. Right now, I mean, the Move On ad in two thousand and four seemed a lot more cut and dried. I mean, they basically said, "Oh, you cannot put this on because it's advocacy." Yeah. I mean, you know, we don't want any anti-Bush messages going up during the Super Bowl uh, in a, in an election year. And uh, it's actually Missouri, not New Jersey, but uh, it doesn't really oh, matter. Oh, uh, it's the call. It's the screener's fault. That's right. <laughs> they got you they have a hard Jersey. job and they work very hard, uh, but it says New Jersey right here on my screen. And uh, I have a, just another question, like yeah. In the Bible, does it say that Jesus was God, or was he a separate entity? There, there's like a lot of ambiguity. <laughs> Even in the early church, there was a lot of debate about that. Um, it wasn't cut and dry, and there's verses that are argued about. Some people say that it was just a... I'll, I'll tell you what you'd want to do. Get two priests of different denominations, put them in a room together, and ask them that question, and then hide under a table or something. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's really up in the air. The, the Orthodox doctrine is that they they would interpret certain verses to be that Jesus was self referencing as God, the one and only God, and there are other people who don't see those verses as meaning uh, that he was trying to call himself God in the way that Orthodox Christianity applies it. So it's really a perspective issue, and you can get people that agree or disagree on these verses. Ask a Jehovah Witness, and then go and ask a, a Baptist, and you'll get two different answers. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, you know, there there are a gazillion different answers to what the Trinity is like. It depends on uh, the franchise of Christianity that you happen to be talking to. And all of them think that it's some deep and fascinating question, like, right. you know, oh, well, God is really one part, but he's three parts at the right. same time. And I've heard very long, boring radio preachers talk for an hour on this topic. And remember that doctrine was being hammered out when the Bible was being put together. So when you have books that would be more toward Jesus being human and not being God, they're not going to make it into the Bible if the doctrine that is, you know, considered orthodox becomes Jesus is God. Suddenly you're going to select the most appropriate books to support that doctrine, and that's why those are in the Bible and certain other books are not. Mm -hmm. Because uh, have you seen that uh, Bill Maher religious yeah. thing? Yeah, I did. Yeah, because uh, there was that guy who, uh, you know, he dressed up as, you know, Jesus at the Jesus Reenactment. At the theme park, right? yeah. Yeah, and he said that, you know, the Trinity is just sort of like water, like, you know, just three different states of matter, but it's all essentially the same <laughs> yeah. molecule. Yeah. The question, I guess, would become, who was Jesus praying to in the Garden of Gethsemane? Yeah, because uh, I always thought if Jesus was God, then, you know, forgiving people by, you know, sacrificing himself, it's like, a parent raising, you know, an unruly child and then forgiving that unruly child by putting his hand on the stove. <laughs> right. Or putting his brother's hand on the stove. Oh, yeah. Because it is, uh, his brother who was making sacrifice. straight A's and never done anything wrong. Yep. But that somehow atones for it, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess all right. that's all I got. Okay, well, thanks, thanks. for calling and uh, all right. enjoy. Good show. All Thank right. you. Bye. Bye. Or, <coughs> excuse me, uh, I see the source of the confusion because our next caller is from New Jersey. Edison, uh, it's Antonio in Edison, New Jersey. And uh, uh, how are you, Antonio? I'm fine, thank you. Thank um, you for waiting. Oh, no problem. Thanks a lot. I appreciate being on the show. Um, all right, so I'm here to uh, prove the existence of God. Oh, excellent. We always like to hear those. But before I do that, um, I would like to, um, well, first of all, uh, give a little background. I'm, uh, I've always been raised a Catholic. I was, my entire family's Catholic. I'm actually, my family's actually from South America, so you can guess how, how zealous people get there uh, about Catholic sure. Catholicism. But, um, I was a Catholic until that last year, and, um, last year what, what happened was I, uh, realized that Christianity couldn't solved many of the questions that I had, mm -hmm. and um, I decided to become an agnostic right after, because I could, even though I could not say that, even though Christianity did not provide uh, some of these, an answer to some of these questions that I had, 
I could also not disprove God. I was never able to um, say that God did not exist. And um, by definition, being an atheist would mean that I would have to disprove God. I would have no, to. actually it doesn't. It doesn't? No, no I mean, that's, it's, that's, it's, well, first, my, my question to you guys is, uh, why do you consider yourselves atheists as opposed to agnostics? Okay, well, first of all, you're operating from, from a very common mis misconception, so it's understandable that you have that. Um, but the fact is that anybody who does not believe a God exists would be considered an atheist. There are other people who are atheists who deny that a God exists. Anyone who says, I reject the claim a God exists is true, would be an atheist. That doesn't mean that they then accept the claim there is no God. Okay, So it would be in terms of like if Russell came to me and told me a story, and it was very far-fetched, but I like Russell and I think he's a pretty honest person, and as far-fetched as it was, it wasn't quite impossible, it was just hard to believe. And he's looking at my face and I look really incredulous, and he says, you, hey, be you believe me? Giant purple yeah. dragon. Well, no, something a little bit, but it's like, yeah. you know, I, I'm not sure whether to believe him or not, and he says, well, you believe me, don't you, Tracy? And I'm sitting there thinking, I don't know. And I say to Russell, I, about, I just okay, don't. Okay, I won a million dollars in the lottery, but then I, uh, you know, I didn't get to the office well, on time. And the, the, point, the point is, I can't say that I believe him right. if I have doubts about what he's telling me and I'm saying, you know, it's just, I just, I can't, I'm having trouble accepting this. But if he says to me, well, do you think I'm lying? Well, no, I mean, I'm not sure what, if what you're saying is true or not. I'm not making a judgment that you're lying. I'm not ready to say that you're lying, but I really can't say that what you're telling me I accept that is true because it's really hard for me to believe this. So you, here you have a situation where a person can say, honestly, I do not believe this story. But at the same time, they're not ready to commit to the idea that the person is, that the opposite of the story is true, that this isn't true. And to answer your question about why we, why we say we're atheists instead of agnostics, I actually say that I'm both. I'm uh, an atheist in the sense that I don't believe in any gods. Uh, I'm also agnostic about the question of whether it could ever be proven that there are no gods. Because, I mean, you know, there are a lot of different ways to describe God. And I certainly wouldn't claim that I can go through every possible meaning of God and conclusively dismiss all of them. But I don't have any particular reason to believe in a God, so I'm an atheist. Yeah, and that's mainly what it comes down to, is the question of when somebody says, God exists, do you accept that claim? Do you accept that that is true? And if a person accepts that it's true, they're a theist. Anybody else is an atheist. So having sidetracked your question, I go on. Well. Um, I guess I just misunderstood the dictionary or something. But um, well, what what definite what is in the dictionary? Well, the dictionary just says that uh, an, an atheist is somebody who rejects the idea of God, like completely. Whereas an agnostic is is open to the idea of there being a God, but cannot either reject or accept um, such an idea. Right. So well, I, I mean, depending the, on what you mean the, uh, by reject, I mean, you know, I I uh, reject the notion of a god, but that doesn't mean that I conclusively... Uh, let me just say, like, for example, I said, what if I can't accept right now that Russell's story is true? I'm just not at the point where I can accept it. I need some evidence that what he's saying is true. If somebody says that rejection is not accepting, then I have rejected Russell's claim. That doesn't mean I'm calling him a liar. It means I'm having a hard time believing what he's telling me is true. I'm rejecting that it's true. I'm not accepting that it's a lie. Okay. I understand. I mean, some people get real confused by that, so it would be okay if you don't understand. But if you, if you look at a broad range of definitions, don't just go to one book, but look at a lot of different dictionaries, theological dictionaries, philosophical dictionaries, and even just regular dictionaries, you're going to find some that say, you know, person who doesn't believe God exists, and you're going to find some that say, person who says there is no God. There's, you're going to find both those definitions. Right, but I think that you'll find also that most people who are prominent advocates of atheism, I'm talking Richard Dawkins, Sam Harris, uh, Christopher Hitchens, would all be working with this, uh, with this sort of um, tentative atheism that we're talking about, where basically they, they uh, pretty strongly disbelieve in a God, but even Richard Dawkins says, you know, I don't put myself on the far end of the spectrum where I don't think there's any possibility of changing. And what I normally say is that I cannot say there is no God 
with any more certainty than I can say there are no leprechauns.